Hi everyone, welcome to Sock Season Week 22, March 24th through 30th, 2024. I'm Carol, host of A Stitch in Time, and I can be found on Ravelry as Knits and Pearls. This week we are going to continue with designs from Hunter Hammerson by exploring the first seven sock patterns from this book, The Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet, 20 patterns inspired by vintage botanical prints, published in 2012 by Pantsville Press. This is the first in a series of three books, and as the title suggests, it was inspired by the idea of curiosity cabinets. As is noted on the back of the book, curiosity cabinets were collections of treasures, fossils and feathers, plants and paintings, skeletons and statues, assembled to help their owners make sense of the world. Offered here is a knitter's interpretation of a curiosity cabinet. This is a collection not of rocks and seeds and gemstones, but of fancy edgings, delicate lace, and captivating stitches, all brought together to create charming sock and accessory patterns. Now, obviously, this is sock season, so I will be concentrating on the socks from this collection but there are included 10 sock patterns and 10 accessory patterns. So the first of the uh, Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet series features on botanical prints. And so each pattern is based on a different botanical print and named for the uh, flower or plant in that print. Uh, that means there are Latin names for me to pronounce. So once again, I do not uh, guarantee that I will be using the proper pronunciation, but I will do my best. So again, uh, Hunter has provided extensive uh, tips and guidelines on how to uh, read her patterns, use her patterns, and also um, a very detailed stitch key for the uh, charts that are included in this book. I would love to show you all of the botanical prints on which these patterns are based, but unfortunately I can't show you the contents of the book because of copyright laws. However, I am going to provide links to all of my Ravelry project pages for the socks I show you today. And from there, you can follow a link to the pattern page and the uh, illustrations are provided on there. So there's a roundabout way that you can look at them if you so choose. Um, also, just a reminder that uh, all of these books are out of print, but uh, you may be able to track down a secondhand copy on a, at a used bookstore, or um, Hunter makes some of her patterns available a couple times a year, and you can find out which ones and when by signing up for her newsletter or following her on Instagram. At the time that I'm recording this episode, my own crocuses are in full bloom, although they'll probably be done by the time this episode airs. But many of them are a beautiful purple, just like these crocus burnus socks. I knit these from Knit Picks Stroll in the Royalty Tonal colorway. And once again, I chose a beautiful dark purple that makes it difficult to see the stitch details on the socks from a distance. So let me bring them in closer and you can get a really good look at this gorgeous lace and ribbed pattern that runs all the way down the entire sock. Finishes with a ribbed toe and then once again, we see a ribbed heel flap. So I'll give you a really good look. It is a tonal yarn, so you can see the different shades of purple in here. And I think they are beautiful. So once again, I'll give you a look at all of the socks on sock blockers and then I will show you a brief clip of how they look like when I'm wearing them. Thank you. 
Chrysanthemum frutensis is the Latin name for marguerite or Paris daisy. And this is just a stunning lace sock, which is featured on the cover of the book, and rightly so. I used Handmade in Cosba in the apricot colorway, and I think it shows off this lace pattern beautifully. So let me bring this one in closer so you can get a good look. These socks begin with a pico cuff, and then you can see this exquisite lace pattern that runs down the entire sock has a garter rib heel flap. And then you will see a little bit of ribbing and reverse stockinette stitch on the toe. And I'm gonna flip these around a bit so you can see how the design flows from the instep right into the toe. Uh, attention to detail that is typical of many Hunter Hammerson patterns. I will give you one more look up close. There you go. And here they are on my feet. <laughs> explains in the book, Rubus subirectus is a wild cousin to blackberries and raspberries. And I chose to knit my socks in this delicate colorway from the Unique Sheep. This is the Pajmi base and it is the Marquise Gray colorway. But as you will see, there's a lot of lavender in with this gray and I think it shows off the stitch pattern beautifully. So you can see the sock begins with this cuff that is bordered by bands of reverse stockinette. And then this pattern runs all the way down the length of the sock. Once again, we see some ribbing in the toe and in the heel flap. Make sure you get a good look. And once more, a last look at them on the sock blockers. bit of a geek when it comes to my knitting and I absolutely love it when I can tie together a yarn colorway name with a pattern design and this was a match made in heaven. These are the Pinus Sylvestris socks named for the Scotch pine and I knit these from some yarn from Impulse of Delight which was a British Columbian company which is sadly no longer in business. The dyer behind Impulse of Delight was also a nature photographer and all of her colorways were based on photos that she took. And this colorway name is Underwater Pine Petal, which uh, as you might guess was inspired by a photo of a little bit of pine cone under some running water. So I just thought they were perfect for each other. So once again, this is rather dark yarn. So I'll bring the socks in closer so you can uh, see them up close. So 
half of the back of each sock features this lace design. And then that same lace design is repeated on the front of, uh, half of the front, I should say. It runs all the way down and then crosses over the instep. So we have seen this feature before on some Hunter Hammers and socks. You can see attention to detail again, a uh, twisted rib cuff on this plain stockinette section, but then a ribbed cuff that flows into the lace pattern on this section. This he half of the heel flap is plain stockinette, but this half is ribbing that flows out of that lace. And then you can see that the rest of the stock is stockinette. So I'm gonna slow this down because I've been doing a lot of flipping. There you can really get a good look at both the lace pattern and the beautiful tonal colorway here. And these socks are symmetrical so that the lace pattern runs across the instep uh, in opposite directions. So they are, I said symmetrical, they are mirror images of each other. So again, a good look at them here on the sock blockers and now I will give you a model shot. design was inspired by Rosa rubiginosa, which is Latin for sweetbriar rose. And once again, I was able to link the yarn and pattern. This is the fragrant colorway of Madeline Tosh Tosh Sock, and I thought both the name and this beautiful tonal pink were the perfect match for this pattern. So I will show you more closely this ribbed cuff, this overall diamond lace pattern, and this garter rib heel flap. And once again, attention to detail that we've seen before, this lace pattern flows into the toe area. Twist these back around and I'll give you another longer, closer look. And there you have them. Next up is Dianthus superbus, which is a variety of Dianthus known as large pink or fringed pink. In photos, they look more purple and Hunter chose a purple yarn for her sample, but I decided to knit mine in this beautiful magenta pink from Hazel Knits. This is the Entice MCN base in the Land of Sweets colorway. And I'm pretty sure this was a club colorway. These socks feature columns of this gorgeous swirly cable pattern. 
You can see it begins with a rolled cuff and then the cables run all the way down the sock, finishing in a ribbed toe and then a ribbed slip stitch heel flap. Once again, I'll give you a really good look at this beautiful yarn and this beautiful pattern. And one last look at them on the sock blockers. design and final socks for this week were inspired by Narcissus Pseudo Narcissus, which is Latin for wild daffodil or lint lily. Daffodils are such cheerful spring flowers and by the time you see this episode, mine should be blooming. I have a few that are just about to open. I knit these beautiful socks from some yarn from Alpha B Yarns. It's the BFF B base in the Columbia Gorge colorway. This uh, was a dyer, I believe out of Portland, Oregon, but I'm not sure if they are still in business. But let me show you this absolutely incredible lace and twisted stitch design begins with a twisted rib cuff and then this design goes all the way down the sock against a background of reverse stockinette. You see a twisted stitch ribbed heel flap and a reverse stockinette toe. And again, I'll show you that instep and how the design flows into the toe area. I think both the yarn and the design are just exquisite and go together perfectly. All right, and now I will give you the last model shot for the week. sock season week 22. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more knitting and crafting content, be sure to check out regular episodes of A Stitch in Time. I hope you enjoyed the first seven sock patterns from the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet this week. And I'll be back next week with the final three sock designs from that book. And then I will give you a look into the Knitter's Curiosity Cabinet too. I hope you'll join me then. Have yourselves a great week and thanks so much for watching. <music>